So welcome to FMTrain.tv, where every day is a great day to learn about the FileMaker platform. Why? Because when you learn about FileMaker, you become a highly desired, highly desirable asset within the world of technology. Yeah, no, you are a uh, very, very important person to what we want to do. What you, what your organization needs from you is awesome solutions. I uh, spent a couple minutes with uh, Larry working on baseball database yesterday, Larry the Marine, something about it was the problem was is that he had this new uh, contract system for people who made over $100 million a year in minor league baseball. And it couldn't handle the extra digits of all the money they demanded. So we had to fix his relationship. So printing with FileMaker is today. Now, we tried to do this topic uh, uh, last week or the week before. We were distracted by <laughs> so much awesomeness in the monkey bread plugin. We couldn't even get to printing. Um, there was so much awesomeness. I don't know what's going to happen today. If we see more awesomeness and we ask questions and you solve problems in the day successful, I just don't know how far we'll get in printing, right? And when I say printing, I'm assuming he means printing to PDF or printing to paper, either one. But I'm sure Christian will update us momentarily. If you want to support the channel, you want to buy Monkey Bread plugin and buy one of our training bundles, and that will keep most of the people here happy. That would be really great. If you have Monkey Bread, renew it when it comes up. It's only a dollar twenty or something per user per month. It's it's stupid cheap. Renew the bundle. We greatly appreciate it. So with that in mind, we're going to Margaret. Are you there? Are we ready to take questions and things like that? If we have, yes. And Christian Schmidt is here to tell us about Monkey Bread and printing, and. Why do we care about this? I always say that, Christian, what are you doing and why should we care? Right? I always ask that question. Well, um, have you ever tried to print to a specific printer in FileMaker? Yes. And uh, it used to be a big topic years ago. I see that less now, but printing to specific kinds of, I mean, at one point, didn't Claris build it into the product so you could change the printers with your script? Yeah, you can change it, but you have to set up which printer it is in advance. Okay. So if you develop the solution on your computer, you would pick a printer you have there, mm -hmm. and then you send the script to the customer, and they don't have that printer, so your script is broken. That's a correct statement. So you're telling me if I use Monkey Bread plugin, the, the, the script won't be broken? Yeah. You can wow. Pick the, you can pick the printer by name. Oh, by name. Okay, why don't you so, show us this? Because this sounds. Yeah, I mean, yeah. to be to be clear, this used to be a really big deal years ago with printing and people having different printers, and they had the eleven by seventeen wide format printer, and then they had a color, that black one. I still have all this because of all the training I do, especially in aviation. A lot of times, I take the paper with me because I'm not twelve, and I don't believe <clears> it. You know, I've been there when the iPad and iPhones die, and you're stuck with paper while you're flying. Well, um, let's, but yeah. uh, let's first uh, go to our documentation and see print, because we have a lot of things for printing. We have print dialog functions for Mac. We have some print functions for Windows. Okay, so if you have questions about printing today, because we got Christian Schmidt here, please ask the questions. If you have a question, it's not a, it's not a stupid question. Um, as long as it's loosely about FileMaker, we will accept anything. But prefer, preferably it has something to do with, I can't print to the right printer, or if I change offices, I can't print. That's what this conversation is about. So Christian, continue, okay. please. So we have print functions for Mac, for Windows, and with the next version of the plugin, also on iOS, if you use the iOS SDK. In all uh, ways, we want to have more options than provided by FileMaker. So let's go and find the example here for Mac. So we have a print folder here with some examples, and we have functions here. So on Mac, the MBS plugin can intercept both the page setup dialog and the printer dialog. So you say FileMaker should print, we open this, go to a script. So you use the print command in FileMaker to print, but the plugin will intercept the dialog opening. And so the plugin can make the settings for you and doesn't even need to show the dialog. So we can just apply whatever settings you like to have. 
For example, we can uh, run a script, we enable the plugin because the plugin doesn't intercept always. It uh, needs to be asked to change FileMaker to redirect the print dialog. And then you can tell it, uh, for example, the printer name and whether you want the dialog to show or when to, whether you want to print a PDF. And then you use the normal FileMaker print command. Okay. I'm gonna and I'm gonna interrupt for a second. So this yeah. is a little different than normal, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask the question. So normally we call Monkey Bread to do something special for us, like draw a picture or to have a window fly around. But in this case, we're telling Monkey Bread to intercept and take over the print requests that FileMaker Pro generates. Is is that a true statement? Is what I. Yeah, well, FileMaker will ask the system to show the print dialog. Uh -huh. And the plugin intercepts that dialog request. So we can make all the little adjustments you want. Um, then so, tell FileMaker yeah. that the dialog was completed. You clicked the print button. And FileMaker will continue to print with the settings we specified with the plugin. So so I have this to be everyone clear. Some of you are more junior people than I am. The idea is that I'm waving my hands over here is that monkey bread plugin is going to completely intercept or intercede uh, between uh, the FileMaker Pro calling the print job and the operating system. And then, and because it's monkey bread doing the printing, it's kind of like weaseled its way in there. Yeah, it's we still have FileMaker does the printing. But, yeah, it's doing so the printing, but it's it's managing all the settings itself which is yeah. really powerful right so, so normally uh you would print and you would get here a lot of uh, checkboxes to say here pages media where to get the paper and then we'll print but we want to automate it because sometimes you want to print a hundred things and you may want to print some pages on on one paper and other pages on a different paper and I've seen people who use up to up to three papers uh, for printing an invoice. There's a nice title page with all the company logo on it, and there's a second page for additional uh, second paper for additional pages, and then there's a final page because um, they may have a little printout on there for the bank, so they can directly uh, send the money. So for this, you would need uh, three print jobs so you can print individual pages with different papers. So, and because we are we are actually changing how the print command works, there is an enable and disable here. So we turn it on here in the script and turn it off when we are finished. This way the user can just print normally with the menu and because otherwise the dialog wouldn't show up because we may disable the dialog. So basically, I, we're fixing stuff over here. So basically, we're telling the Monkey Bread plugin to intercept the printing action and to help us with it and then to shut off. If you leave it on, then it's going to keep intercepting until you quit FileMaker or something. Um, so now we have the question about options. Um, let's go to the documentation. Um, we have a couple of, where is it here, print dialog. So we have a couple of functions here. For example, there's a set copies function, which you just call to tell the plugin whatever it should put in the, the copies field. So default, usually you start with uh, resetting the options. Um, there's a reset here. So you can reset all the variables of the plugin. Then uh, you would set options like the copies or the duplex or the first page, last page. So the plugin remembers this in global variables. And then when the dialog is showing up, we can set up all the options you want. Okay, so real quick, Rick Fosna says, how about switching the printer between labels and paper? So Rick Fosna, I have a laser printer that does laser stuff and I have the Dymo label printer, which is totally a different kind of printer. Are you running the labels through the same? Is it a different tray or something? So, because it's, yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering so if he's... you would you would go to the page setup dialog usually, mm -hmm. and then pick whatever printer you like. Pick yes. the label printer, and then pick here some uh, label paper. 
you know, whatever paper you have for the label printing. And then after you pick the paper, you would go to the um, print dialog to print to this printer. Okay. And we can also, the same way we change the print dialog, we also change the page setup dialog. So yeah. we can tell FileMaker which paper to use and okay. which printer. So you may start and uh, set the printer with a page setup dialog. I think there's one here. Oh. Let's see what this example does. Yeah. So this example will use our page setup dialog functions. We enable them. We set a paper name. And um, I figured out that uh, if I want to be independent of the language, I use uh, the internal code. So ISO A4, A4 paper, and uh, here, Portrait. So if I use, if I, okay, but we're but here in the United States, we would use eight and a half by 11. I mean, a lot of people use A4. If we did eight and a half by 11, yeah. The uh, your tier, North ah, America letter, North yeah, America yeah, legal. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then there'll probably be some other ones. Something There's something. also a, uh, like I have one printer that is 11 by 17. Sometimes they call that tabloid or something like that. It's a big, how, how if it's not on the list, how would you figure out what it's called? Well, the, the first thing would be to you, to pick it manually and then yeah. ask the plugin here, get last settings. Yes. Get, uh, okay. That, uh, okay. That is huge. Everyone follow this. This is huge. You're not going to know what all the settings should be. So you're going to, and I'm, he, he probably said this, but I'm going to restate it again because it's so important. Print manually correctly once. Make sure it works the way you want with the right label, the right print, et cetera. Then you're going to go back and say, get the last settings. That way you know what these all will, will should be. Does that make sense what I said? Yeah. Because I don't know what tabloid is. That's why I was asking, like, how the hell would I know 11 by 17, right? So, let's see. Page setup. I say here, uh, let's say the laser printer and say, yeah, tabloid. So, okay, and now I go to the data viewer mm. plus and uh, get last settings. Uh, oh, get, see, there it is. And it's a, uh, uh, these are all the settings we can pass. Well, mostly. These are all the JSON from the current uh, thing. And here is a paper ah. name is tabloid. It is tabloid. Okay, there it is. But yeah. it's not like in a tabloid or ISO tabloid or something like Currently, that. Currently, okay. this one I'm using is tabloid. But okay. With a lot of new customers who come to this functionality first time, we ask them to look in the last settings to actually figure out how the printer names things, because otherwise you would have to look in the printer definition to find all the names, like what are the trays named? The paper trays. I don't know. Every printer is different. So right. in this case, um, the plugin will set the paper name we hey, want and, and the orientation and disable the dialog. And then we do a clever thing here. We trigger the menu command for page setup because there is no page setup command in FileMaker here. At least I would be surprised to find one. There's print setup, yeah. Maybe that's it. Yeah. So instead of this, I could probably also do this. Let's try it. So we do here a four portrait, a five portrait, and a four landscape. Yeah, yeah. Let's run it. Something happens. Oh, where is it? Where does it go? So save dialog. Uh, oh yeah, here. So we got a five, a four, and a four white. And you see that the landscape versus portrait didn't did work. So this is twenty nine. Hey, Why I do have, I do have a relevant question here. So yeah. if we're so you're gonna so say we're gonna start this process. The first thing we need to do is print correctly manually, and yeah. and then capture the settings, then put them in the yeah. script. So in order to do the capture, like the where we do it manually, are we gonna use the? Are we still do, using your Monkey bread plugin to intercept it at that point, or are we going to print? Yeah, just yeah. intercept it without uh, here, print dialog. Uh, you intercept it without uh, actually changing anything. Right. So you intercept so it without changing anything. 
we do the print so it'll be like the normal dialogue we change what we want to change and we can go back and ask hey what were the settings we just used yeah. right yeah perfect yeah. does everyone follow so, what i just said there because that's kind of important i mean this is like a fundamental of this because i have not actually ever used monkey bread to print print like this and this is really mm, great okay like, so why do we change the page size here in this example is because we use safe record as PDF. So we don't actually print, but we make PDF files yes. as FileMaker. And FileMaker will use whatever page setup you have currently to make those PDF files. So by changing the paper format, we can actually influence the PDF files created. Okay, I see, but I have a quick question. I have I see the install up there. Is install what's oh that's now optional. That's happens automatically. Yeah, I was wondering about that. I was like, okay, the install well. actually puts in the, the, the patch for the function. Um and then enable turns it on and off. But uh, because I had customers who um, are confused with two commands, um I made it that enable will on the first call check if uh, Install is needed and just do it. Okay. I was about to say because install and enable, I understand. I understand. Listen, as a programmer, I understand there's a difference in that, but some people would not get that. So you said you've yeah, already run okay. in, you've already run into that issue, which is great. So, so okay, you enable so it, you, you can... set A4, then you print. Okay. Yeah. Or run okay, we, we make here. So for saving as PDF, you wouldn't probably not. If I would ask you how to change the paper size for saving as PDF, you would may you may not know that you have to change the printer setup. Okay, um, so this prints three times, and then you can have custom paper size because you can just put in a point value. How many points do you want to have as paper width and high? So you can have any paper size you want for your PDFs. That's maker. that's points per inch, right? What we're saying there. That's that's your no. That's guy points, dots per inch. Uh, the the usual layout is seventy two points per inch. Yeah. So this is basically uh, yeah. We, we used to be DPI, but now it's points per points per inch. All right. So that's three hundred used to be the big differentiation between laser printers and screen. Two. So this is four point one inch. If it was seventy two. It is seventy two. Okay. So, um, okay, this is here page setup uh, example. And let's see, um, this is uh, just intercept the dialogue. So we can also change the scaling factor. So you can actually um, change the scaling so you get uh, your, your content bigger or smaller if you need. Oh, that's the scale up, scale down. Okay, yeah, yeah we use that. I, well, I use that all the time personally. But yeah. So let's go through the list of options here a little bit more. So we have first page, last page. So you can only print uh, a range of pages from whatever file maker sends to the printer. It would ignore the other pages. You can tell the plugin to not show the, show the dialog. So if you say no dialog, uh, then... Um, the dialog will not show up. Uh, FileMaker will think you clicked a uh, print button very quickly. If you enable the dialog, you can review the changes and uh, then print. Yeah. Then we have uh, custom options. So you saw the last settings section. Some printers have some, let's say, yeah, custom options. So for example, there is one uh, printer which does hair lines mm. and, uh, or some do duplex uh, with several settings or here um, you may have an input slot. So this printer has several mm. output bins and okay. several input slots and they have names and you would have to figure out the names of course uh, upfront and uh, also for the airbox bins. Um, and then uh, there is here a HP printer for a customer who uses different paper uh, types. So you can define what type of paper you have for printing on. So you can decide which one you pick and uh, define a print quality. 
So we actually had customers uh, who asked about these options. And so we had to look up the last settings and figure out how they could uh, apply the setting. Then we have the print to PDF option, which allows you to well, print, redirect printing directly to a PDF file, which is similar to save as PDF in FileMaker, but not the same. So, so yeah, Rick, Rick Fosnott says he has five different printers depending upon label size. Yeah, so this would allow you to dynamically tell FileMaker which printer to print to. Yeah. be pretty great. Set printer name. That's the one you want. So you you may want to first do the page setup to actually say, I want this printer with that paper because the paper is often printer dependent. So not every printer does every paper sizes. So you have to first say printer with paper and then you can say print to this printer. And I have customers uh, which have a database. So for every workstation in the office, the database knows in a record which is the next printer for color or for black and white. So or you, have, you, a, you have, have a table. You have a table of printers. So every record's a printer, right? Yeah, you have to connect uh, which desk, uh, which which uh, here seat has mm -hmm. which printers nearby in the office, mm -hmm. so you can redirect to the printer on the same floor, mm -hmm. like in a big office. Why not? Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Or you could say, if I'm printing this label, it goes to this printer. And if I'm printing the other label, it goes to a different printer. So there's also a print type where you can tell what FileMaker should print, like uh, here. Records being browsed, uh, current record or blank record. And there's a blanket option. So second thing. Yeah, um, uh, yeah here, set tray. It's also an explicit function for setting the tray. So some printers have tray one, tray two. Someone have tray dash one, tray dash two. Another printer I saw had auto, left, right, lower, middle, upper. Uh, the names differ between all the different uh, manufacturers. So everyone followed the idea that these names and these values are, can be completely different by the printer. So the only way to figure it out once again is to enable the plugin then print manually, then capture the settings after the fact so you know what things were called, right? That's how that works. I think that's such a so, huge um, part of this. So so let's see. Um, what was it? Tabloid. Uh, 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 what was it? A4? What was the name? Where that? Uh, I mean, so um, you can find all the things. So I, I went to a folder on my disk, which is um, etc, coops, uh, ppd, where I have the printer divination files, which tell all the options. Uh, so this is basically where the system stores uh, all the setup files for your printers. And I have here a laser printer and an Epson printer. But, uh, so this defines all, all the options for the coop system. If you are finished with Mac uh, soon, we can go to Windows. Hey, Lynn, do you want to see this for Windows? Yes? No? Maybe? Okay. I we got a do. Windows uh, test machine yeah, Lynn here. says uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's see. Extensions. Do I have a plugin installed? Yeah, from not the current one, but okay. So examples are Windows. Where's Windows? When only want to switch. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, read that text, but yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. We don't have the, um, you know, the things to make things larger. Uh, the zoom, But yeah. I can zoom in the layout. There we go. The next thing on Windows, you have the usual print dialog on Windows. So this dialog is the same uh, for all Windows versions. So the text changes because of the language you may have. And here again, you can manually pick a laser printer. You can go properties. Why is it the properties? I'm good. Okay. So you can pick the paper size here and the source uh, where you want and the page range. So, and we want to automate that. So on Windows, we can't patch uh, to get between FileMaker and the system. So instead, we script thing. So, and our script, 
we say for printing or for setting the printer, we say just, uh, we call the MBS, what's happening? Uh, the MBS printer set printer function. I'm not sure anyone's, oops, I'm not sure anyone's going to be able to read that between you and me. Yeah. I okay. I can go to the help page. That's maybe easier. So, uh, well, I'm I just gonna... want people to be able to read that, right? So, yeah. So we go to the printer, and here is a set printer function. So the set printer function takes the name of the printer, and then we have an option for what to do with the dialog. Usually, uh, we, we close the dialog, so you pass one to close it or zero to leave it open, and you can pass in the paper name and the paper orientation you want and the paper source. So the plugin goes and Yes, here's a paid setup, this dialog here. So leave it in the background. So you call the function, there's an example here, and you just pass in a printer name. You can leave the printer name empty if you don't want to change it. Um, and then you can pass in whatever name is here in the box for the paper. And you can decide whether you want a landscape and, or yeah, portrait. The plugin will, uh, no, that's something in the script. You will call this function and then you will please make a pause. And while this pause is running, FileMaker will show the print dialog, or in this case, the print setup dialog. Um, then the plugin will click very quickly. I can just show you. So there. No, I'm here. I'm, I'm trying to, uh, so this, this operates differently than the Mac one, yeah. right? A this is differently than Mac. Uh, you see, I click set printer. It will quickly show the dialogue and the plugin will make all the things you ask it for. And then we'll close the dialogue. Okay. So it doesn't suppress the dialogue. You still see it, it flashes, but then it goes away. Okay. Yeah. Um, is the, is the part where you capture the last settings, is that still a thing with this on windows? No, that's not on Windows. Oh, well, it is, but differently. So when the plugin sees uh, the things in the pop-up menus, mm -hmm. it uh, will put them, will store them. So there is a function to get you the paper formats, the paper sources, and the printer names. Okay. So you can query it. So the implementation, Lynn, is one of those deals where I'm glad there's Windows support. It's just different. Uh, clearly, the way that he did it on the Mac wouldn't, or vice versa, built on a Windows first, whatever. It wouldn't support on Windows directly with the same exact technique, but... Um, so, uh, you see, if uh, I yeah. have this project here to create paper formats and sources, mm. it opens uh, the print dialog for all the printers, and we'll just fill in here the fields with all the paper formats it sees, all the paper sources it sees, and the printer names. Is that so that's one of your sample files, the query yeah. paper format sources? Yeah, so we automatically uh, figure out all the names of uh, the trays. Like here, yeah. you see there's a tray for pictures, and a main tray, and a back tray. And there's a manual tray, and a tray number one. Sorry for the germ names. <laughs> that's the quite names right. will be different for everyone. So you, uh, if you want to print, you would then uh, call the setup printer function, oh no, the print function, again, with a two second pause. So the dialog has time to show up and go away. And you can pass in what, what you want, like how many copies, what paper format to use, uh, landscape or portrait, the paper source, uh, the page is form and two, and uh, whether you want to collate, collage pages, uh, no, collate, yeah, collate, collate, yeah, collate, yeah, collate. Collage yeah. is one thing and collate something else. It's a typo. I need to fix that. And, oh, uh, okay. So it's not print? a collage. They're all collate. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So those are all options in the dialog and the plugin will just apply them. If you want, uh, you can leave things uh, empty, of course. So it will just stay whatever value it has currently. And for the printer name, there's a special thing where you can just say uh, something like here, uh, you, you just put in the prefix. So mm. if, if you don't find the exact name for, for the printer, for the paper, or for the paper source, we will pick the first one which starts like this. Yeah, okay. So 
for a lot of companies, it's just you have some bother laser printer and don't care which one. Just pick the first one. So you put so if do you need to put a wild card on there or is it just no? No, no, it's just uh, if it doesn't find the exact match, it will look for prefix. Oh, okay. That's, That's interesting. Um, that's because we, we put something like here, A4, mm. and some printer name it A4, but some other uh, did something like this, uh, where they just mod mm. again. Uh, so German industry norm A4. Uh, several things happen. Uh, or here, like uh, there's B5 uh, with JRS, and you could just press B5 and get this paper. So, okay. Do we have questions about Windows? Uh, I'm going to do this one question uh, right here from Rick. Margaret. Yeah, okay. You, I was going to grab the same question, so you go. Yeah, Rick says, scary. I have both Mac and Windows users using the same solution. I would need to duplicate the plugin in one Mac and one in Windows. Well, I mean, yeah, so backup. So, Rick, uh, you're going to – I mean, it's two different installs anyway. So, yeah, you have to install Mac and or Windows is one. And then normally the code – for the most part, monkey bread. I'm just going to say, let's pretend that Christian Schmidt's not here for the moment, right? Um, I would assume for the most part that uh, most of the things we do in monkey bread works equally well on Mac or Windows, right? So, and the code works either way. But this is one of those deals where you really need to code it and fork the code, whether it's Mac or Windows, and do it differently because they're really not the same. Clearly, when it pops a pause to allow the dialogue to do something, um, I don't want to say it's a hack, but it, and it works, and it's been working reliably for a very long time. However, it's a different process entirely. So this is one of those deals where, yeah, it, Frick, so if you have, like, the like at RCC, we're a mixed Mac and Windows shop. So when we, on some of our apps, it checks to see what the version is, and it runs an update or whatever, but it installs either the Mac, the Mac plugin or the Windows 64-bit there aren't too many people running around 32 bit anymore on Windows, but you still have both plugins, right? You have the Windows 32 and. Yeah, still, uh, I built those. Uh, it doesn't cost me anything. It's okay. Just takes a minute longer. Um. Yeah. So you're going to, so you're going to have uh, the code will have to fork Rick. If you have Mac and Windows users, it's going to have to fork and you're going to have to do that. Um, yeah. I guess I'd have to get the device type. Uh, I was just doing that. It's called get system platform. And you would put that in a global variable is what I would do. I was just, I was actually literally, there was a bug in starting point light, right? The one that we've been playing with. And there's also a calculation in there, kicking out PDFs that badly written by someone, very obscure, not very straightforward. It's like, uh, I don't like mayonnaise not on the hamburger, not on my road. And I'm like, if you put enough negatives in a sentence, it becomes completely un non-understandable. Or it, it it becomes yeah it becomes un, non intelligible how about that or intelligible whatever the point is you get the idea so this deal right here is that you're going to get get system platform negative one or one is a Mac negative two or two is Windows trust me on this if you read the help sometimes they won't say it's negative two and two but a lot of times there's a a, a split in the operating systems for whatever reason and so. A negative one or a one is a Mac. Negative two or two is is Windows. Three is iOS. Um, and then four is WebDirect. And five and six are variations of Linux, which don't run Pro. They run server, right? So that's important, right? So yeah, get system platform. There you go. And so, yeah. And this pops up, scroll down here. That's what you're going to need. Then, then from that, you can fork your code and then go either way with monkey bread, right? I was just literally doing this an hour before the show started today. I'm like, okay, yeah. Questions I from other people? I wish we would have the same functions. Um, uh, and uh, I think we got a function for a uh, question for asking for printing to PDF on Windows. Yes. So... There is something called Microsoft Print to PDF, a special PDF print driver. And there are other printer drivers available to print to PDF. You can use those to well, make a PDF file. The only problem is uh, that they will ask for file name. Mm. And uh, so backup. So so this so we're this is a great conversation. So just to be clear, I'm going to clarify this. 
If you're in FileMaker, he's doing something as soon as he's done I'm, here. Yeah, I'm in Microsoft. FileMaker. I say print current record to this Microsoft print to PDF. Okay. Print so he, so the PDF is being created by a library inside Microsoft Windows. Okay. Yes. FileMaker is, is just drawing. to. That's the difference between save as PDF and print to PDF. That's why I want, this is what I'm yeah. trying to explain. So go ahead. If you want to explain it, but Claris licensed. Yeah. A PDF saving process, if you go right now under file, down to whatever it is, somewhere down there, save as a PDF right there in the middle. Yeah. And it's a script so, step for that, too. This is what we were playing with uh, yesterday or the last week or whatever. Save as a PDF and then doing it on the server versus doing it on the local client. And you have some path names and things like that. This library right here is a library that that that. Claris license, it's built into Pro. So the code that creates the PDF, for example, at one point, if you're ever troubleshooting PDFs, one point we had a, uh, there was a deal where um, Claris, people were putting a, like a header, a picture of a header of their company on the header of a PDF. And then every page, it had the little company logo. And the company logo was large for whatever reason. <clears throat> and then so as Claris saved the PDF, it would save a full copy of that image on every page. However, Within the PDF specification, there's all sorts of things you can do for optimization. One of the things is you can put the put an image on the PDF on page one, then re-reference that same image on the other pages. So it's saved in the PDF once instead of being on every page. Well, Claris fixed this issue, but it showed differences between the print job, printing with the Mac OS or printing with Windows versus the save as PDF. Largely, I just use save as PDF unless something unsavory happens, and then I switch gears to another method but i can't tell that's happened has, has that happened for you recently at all were you um i remember that people complained that uh save as pdf and print to pdf would give different results for some styling okay but yeah i can't so, remember the details um, yes so styling issues right so styling issues or you know, like one was really big and the other one was smaller right one was more efficient right and i know claire's and they have to pay an annual license fee or whatever to whoever for that library, right? In fact, it used to be Adobe, but then they bought uh, the license now from some third party because the PDF is kind of this open standard now, right? It used to yeah, be. Yeah, all... that was a surprise a few years ago where they changed the PDF library in a little dot release. And to be clear about this is that Christian Schmidt is works with the Dyna PDF. That's another company that makes a library. Uh, and so I don't know, is Claris using DynaPDF? Probably not. No, no, uses... not DynaPDF. Okay. So there's multiple companies that make libraries. Just keep in mind that, you know, the output from one library may be a little different than the output from library. Theoretically, in a perfect world, they'd all be identical, but they won't be. Yeah. So. And uh, also our DynaPDF functions can optimize a PDF and do the deduplication of the pictures if you need that. So, and for printing to PDF on Windows. So there are several PDF printer drivers available. Some of them uh, can be configured to automatically put the PDF in a special folder. So you don't need uh, to uh, use a save dialog each time to actually save to PDF. And, uh, that makes automating printing to PDF a lot easier on Windows. But you can just use save as PDF usually. Usually, yeah. So I would use save as PDF for simplicity and then... So um, since most customers nowadays send uh, invoices as PDF files, the printing functions are less used maybe, but still uh, a great job as uh, for making labels mm -hmm. of all kinds and things where you actually have to print something like uh, a packaging list or uh, Something yeah, you actually ship something, and uh, we're talking about that question uh, about what are the main reasons that clients use the print feature, right? So, uh, paper copies of stuff, labels is a big one. I do a lot of labeling internally uh, myself, uh, but most I would say, if I had, you know, depends on where you work, but I would say seventy to eighty percent of all print commands these days. When I say print, is printing to PDF. Now you could use save as PDF, save as PDF, and print as PDF. When I say, if that's said in a conversation, kind of conversationally, that means the same thing, right? Technically, the drivers might be different, but the idea is that you're outputting to PDF. 
You don't export to PDF. That's not a thing. Um, you print to PDF as a general idea because it renders this rendering and it creates this postscript or whatever rendering um, turns into bitmaps or whatever, however that says, vectors, and it shoots off to the PDF format saved. Okay, So it's most of a print job. Im you import data. You don't generally import PDFs because PDF is, is more analogous or closer to a piece of paper that's printed, right? So import, export, uh, other formats, printing to PDF, scanning a PDF as an image and sticking in a container, common. Bringing a PDF in and parsing it uh, would be another monkey bed function. You could bring it into a container once it was, or target it with monkey bread, have monkey bread read it. And remember, PDFs come in, there's two things under the hood with PDFs. It's such an important thing. A PDF can be either an image largely a whole image. Like if you have a scanner, uh -huh. it scans it on your desk. Largely, it's a photograph. It's a scan, okay? Um, and so the whole thing's an image. So really, the text isn't really selectable unless there's some sort of OCR thing going on. With the Macs, and I think Windows now too, you can highlight on text, and it will try to OCR that in real time. It acts like it's real text, but it's an image. It can get stuff wrong. It can absolutely get text wrong. The OCR can be... Uh, not perfect. Uh, if you print to PDF as opposed to scanning a document, then the print is actually text in the PDF document. It's actually specifically vector artwork. It's text. Mm -hmm. And so you can pull that out of there real easy, right? So there's image PDFs, text PDFs, and of course, PDFs where they're kind of mixed together, right? Where you print and there's some images in there and they get mixed in. But understand that to, for those of you who are newer, Rick, and whoever else, um, just understand that that's very different. And, and I just real quick on my computer here, I double click a PDF over here. Um, so I'm on, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see, you can't see this Christian. I'm just gonna, I'll go ahead and show my screen real quick. Um, share desktop. So this is a PDF where we're setting up the audio on this computer. This is uh, not PDF, it's a PNG. It could be a PDF, okay? But it's an image. But the technology is getting better now. So if I'm over here, before it was just text, and you knew it was text, the computer didn't know it was just a picture, right? But if I double click on this, the Mac's going, well, uh, that might be some text. Let me do some analysis. It does it really fast. Let's highlight that and let them know. However, uh, one of the biggest problems I had was getting some serial numbers to work one time. And I had a screenshot of where this, I bought a license key from, I don't know, it was, it was a monkey brat or something. It was a license key somewhere I had. And I had an image, and I it was A131, I, 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 ex, exclamation points, like a bunch of junk garbage. And and I highlighted it, and I copied it. So I copy, right? Doo, doo, doo. And then you go over to a text editor somewhere, and you paste it in, and you're like, uh, that looks great, okay? Except that when you have a L, like that's, a, uh, that's an L. Okay, so here's a look. I'm going to make a shift there. I'm going to see if I can make this bigger. Can I make this bigger? Here we go. There's a capital L, okay? Here is a lowercase L, okay? Here is a upper, uh, no, it, it autocorrected, okay? Nope, damn it. Okay, now here is an uppercase I, okay? The top one's an L, the bottom one's an I, the OCR can't tell the difference. So if you have anything that's like a bunch of Kung Fu serial number letters, like loopback is kind of a word, it's English, and I could have German for whatever, right? Uh, but the point is the AI could make a determination. But if it sees these two side by side, those are two different letters. And on the Mac right now, look at those. Those look damn near identical. That will screw you up. So just keep that in mind on this automatic OCR stuff. It's so amazing. Like I can come down here and I got seven there and apps there and dev there. And so just keep that in mind because it's like literally you don't even know, but you're playing with a grenade <laughs> and uh, you might pull the pin by accident. No one will be hurt, but you'll wonder why it doesn't work. And you'll wonder why FileMaker sucks so much. And it's just you. I, I, I can't tell you the number of times I've been embarrassed when I, I report a bug to Claris because I was stupid. Their product's fine. I was just dumb. And it's kind of very embarrassing. So, all right. I will stop sharing. Uh, last six minutes or so from Christian Schmidt questions. Yeah, I, I would like to show you the final thing here, and that's uh, iOS SDK. If you ever need to write something for iOS where you need to print to a specific printer again, um, we have here print container where you can 
pick the printer by its ID, so the printer name. You can decide whether to show print panel or number of copies, and then you can pick the output type, which is general photo, grayscale, or grayscale photo, and you can decide for duplex mode. And you can even print without a dialog. So if you uh, write your FileMaker iOS SDK based app for iOS to do maybe a point of sales and you need to print a recipe this way, you could do that with our new plugin functions. And let me go to, to Xcode and just see if it runs today. Why don't you try that? Let me frame this real quick because I don't think some people made the. There, you, you're like Chewbacca in the Millennium Falcon. You made a hyperlight jump when you said, hey, let's iOS SDK. So FileMaker Go, right, is the FileMaker Go that runs on iPhone and iPad. iOS SDK is a FileMaker Go that allows you to compile and make your own FileMaker Go application. You can run plugin with FileMaker, with iOS app SDK. You cannot run a plugin with FileMaker Go. There's nowhere to install it. But if you're rolling your own app, you can license Monkey Bread, include it in the with what he's doing in the Xcode, create an app that has Monkey Bread in it, and then put it on the Apple App Store. And that's what he's doing right here. So uh, I can say print container, and I uh, yeah get uh, this dialog here, and can pick my printer, can set the print options, paper size, you know, can set it all automatically and then send it to the printer. And the plugin gives you the controls, so you can do this in code. Um, again, this is a select printer dialog, which would list all the printers in your office. And then you can pick one, and then you can print with our dialog if you want. Um, this is something we, we get for the uh, next plugin version with all the PDF printing on iOS. Really? Okay. Yeah. So again, you could do things with FileMaker Go or with the FileMaker script steps, but here you have the full control to say which printer with what settings. I just wanted to show it today. No, it's good. Um, and I mean, that's why I framed it so people understand what you're talking about. So it's FileMaker Go, but it's your own like little personal building a runtime, basically, right? You're building a runtime. Yeah. So that and, a PDF. and you can just find ways of distributing it. There it is. That's yeah. that's pretty neat. Yeah. You get this nice print dialog. So people have the possibilities to, like, again, say, if you have a bigger application with a lot of users on iOS, you may want to think about using the FileMaker iOS SDK to make yourself an app with your own logo, your own name. Doesn't show FileMaker anywhere if you want. Uh, opens your database on launch automatically, and then you can use the plugin there on the device. And you just need to make this app once because you can just update the database without updating the app. By if you keep the database on the server. Yep. Yeah, you can build a. Um, yeah, that's a whole nother conversation. But you build a launcher file effectively into the local app, and then when you open the app, it it auto bounces and it loads into. Uh, off the FileMaker server. You have to find, I, you know, I haven't distributed an app through the Apple App Store in a long time, but you'd want to do it for your internal people or- Apple Yeah, then you may not even need uh, to distribute it through the App Store. You would just uh, use this, under, this uh, MDM thing where you yeah, would mobile, push the app on all the, do, on all the iPhones in the company. Yeah, mobile device management for larger organizations. RCC is not big, we have 30 people. So we're not big enough to really use that. We're always busy doing other stuff, but mobile device management, if you work for a company, Apple's a little oversized, but you have a hundred employees or something and you're trying to manage all the phones for the employees and things like that, or iPads. <clears throat> MDM stands for mobile device management. It helps you kind of carpet bomb all the, you know, run all the updates or run all the, you know, push updates of FileMaker Go to everyone. That kind yeah, of but there are companies providing uh, solutions for this to to do more mobile device management for smaller companies. Really? Like I remember this one here, Jamf. Oh yeah, I've seen that one before. Yeah, probably. Uh, so they have the possibilities to uh, yeah manage devices uh, here, mobile device management. Uh, and you can read all about that uh, 
Yeah, that's interesting. I uh, so you could things... use that for for your company because it's something like is it a bug or what per device? No, it's per not user uh, per device per month. Okay, so if you have a, a thirty or forty, fifty devices, then you're a couple hundred bucks a month. But once again, that might save you a lot of time. Yeah, it okay. uh, allows you to do uh, limit things people can do with the de devices from the company, uh, and uh, especially do this uh, remote wiping thing. Ah, uh, yes, you lose the, it. The remote wiping is good. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Other things we have questions? questions from anyone is pretty good. Uh, what are you using to write the app? Is a question in Discord. Well, the Primaker iOS SDK creates an Xcode project, so you need the, the Apple Xcode development tool. Yeah, it's Xcode, um, and you don't have to do you don't have to really do that much. It's mostly just setting the configurations up. So basically, kind of what you get from the iOS SDKs, you get kind of the source code. <laughs> uh, it's not readable, but you effectively get the source code for FileMaker Go. You change the configuration, you change some icons. Um, <clears throat> it's one of those things that people think is really great. But the business use case for this is for a small company. It's just kind of it's hard to it's hard to get into that. Just is. well, technically, you can ask someone to do it for you. Like Hansa does. Uh, yeah, Hansa does the that Xcode. one makes sense. We had a FileMaker iOS SDK live stream months before where I basically did it while we are recording. Yep. So you can set up this in, in less than an hour if you want. Or if you know where the pieces are, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's the rub with that. So Hansa can help you with that. And then did you, was that with you we did that live stream? We need to yeah, go back I and find the link for that. I did this live stream several times. Like if you go on my website. Uh, right, a link to it. Yeah. Somewhere on my website, uh, you can search for iOS. And for example, here's a video where I did it uh, some time ago. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's, that's where I made a, yeah. A video step by step. Just, sure. Yeah. There you go. And so, also, uh, if, I'll make if, a live stream somewhere. I I know we did. We just create live streams every day, and I tend to forget. Um, but that's the rub. It's one of those things. There's so many things that cool things you can do with technology in life. That yeah, uh, oh, there it is. I recognize <laughs> that artwork. Um, this is like there's not enough hours in the day to do everything you want to do, right? So at least for me, I don't know about some of you, but I yeah. I have enough interest for about three lifetimes. So anyway. All right, cool. Well, that's it for today. Two o'clock is up. Uh, Christian Schmidt, when are you going to be? Are you going to come back anytime soon? We're going to be back next week, maybe. Margaret, when's he come back? He's yeah, there are more things planned. Next week. Scanning, I believe, is next week. So that'll scanning. be scanning. All right. All right, cool. All right. What I need, by the way, from you, Christian Schmidt, is a function that will help me minimize the raccoons eating my cat food in the backyard. <laughs> it's a raccoon uh, artificial intelligence tracker and then i can shoot like a paintball gun at the i don't really want to kill the raccoon i'm not like it's, like it's a nice animal whatever just how about you just leave me alone so i need to shoot like a non-lethal paintball round at the pet raccoon so i need something that will help so me. you need face recognition for the cat uh and then maybe a water pistol to water pistol will work that'll work too yeah. either one that'll work all right, so we yeah, so we need a a a, a raccoon a coon suppression uh, custom function. All right, we'll work on that. That'll be next project. All right, that'll actually be a fun one. If we can make that work sometime, and then little uh, 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 IoT uh, hardware integration. Right, have to call Hans up, have to integrate it. Right. Yeah, that's that'd be lot. fun. Le electri electrify the cat bowl, zap the raccoon. So yeah, little uh, negative encouragement. All right, that's it, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Tomorrow is Hansa. Tomorrow's Hansa. Speaking of Hansa, well, he'll be here tomorrow. <laughs>